Hi, my name is Quark Yifu, and I'm going to show you how to make Second Life skin textures using Photoshop. First, let me introduce myself. Like I said, my name is Quark Yifu. I've been playing Second Life for over five years. When I first started playing Second Life, I chose a furry avatar. Uh, I think I was a fox. Now, the idea of being a human in Second Life was pretty foreign to me. I, I couldn't imagine why somebody would come in there and choose a human avatar. Uh, especially in Second Life where you could be anything you wanted to be. So I did not want to be a human. I was pretty sure about that. So I chose the uh, furry avatar, and I really liked the furry avatar, but the problem with that is the head was too big. Uh, it just didn't look very good to me. Now, I, I know a lot of people are furries, and they like being furries, and that's all well and good, but for me, I, I didn't want to wear a big, huge head and uh, have huge paws and stuff like that. And I, I tried to shrink the head and shrink the head, and I never could do it. So all I really wanted was a skin that made me look furry. But back then in Second Life, there weren't any skins that made you look furry. I mean, there were a couple, and they were essentially white textures with uh, eye details and lips on them, but nothing, nothing very good. So what really opened my eyes to making skin textures was there was something there that I wanted, that did not exist so I thought I would try to create it so let's go to uh, Second Life Marketplace and if you go to Second Life Marketplace and you uh, type in Quark Yifu Q-U-A-R-K space Y-I-F-U and uh, you have to put in skins S-K-I-N-S -S, because if you don't I've got there's I've made hundreds of items. I've made chairs and lamps and all kinds of stuff. So lots of stuff will come up. So we want to limit the search to skins. This will show you uh, some of the skins that I've made. Now this is almost an anthology of skins. You can see a lot of the uh, skins that I've made are now free. Now some of them are free because I didn't. They're the first ones that I made and I didn't think they were very good. But a lot of them are free just because they're so radical that they just never had a chance to become popular. The goal of this video is to show you the basic concepts of making skin for Second Life. That means things like how to make a good base texture, how to match the seams, where to get your overlay textures, uh, how to choose your base colors, and, and a lot of other stuff. We'll have some details in there too. Now I want you to know ahead of time that it takes practice to do this stuff. Some of the things I had a lot of trouble with in the beginning are now so obvious, and it's it's hard to explain to others that this texture-making stuff just sinks in after a while. Uh, the more you do it, the more you get the hang of it. One of the questions that comes up a lot is, do I need Photoshop to do this? And the answer is no. Photoshop is expensive, and there are a lot of other programs that do this kind of stuff. What you really need here is an ability to manipulate layers of an image. You could just go to your favorite search engine and type in alternatives to Photoshop. One of the better free alternatives is GIMP. I like GIMP. It's a lot like Photoshop and it actually has some pretty good filters that Photoshop doesn't. Okay, what we're going to do now is find some resources for our uh, project that we're going to do. Now, you probably don't know it, but if you have Second Life, it has a bunch of textures and help things already installed in your computer that you don't even know about unless you, you know, snooped around and found them. Uh, now, I installed Second Life onto my D drive. Now, most people would have it in their C drive. So, I'm going to show you. You would look here, Program Files x86, and if you open that up, you would probably find a folder that said Second Life in there. But in my case, I installed it to my D drive because my D drive is a little bit roomier. And here's my programs. Second Life Viewer, right? See here? Character. Now look at all these here. Look at all this stuff here. These are all uh, helper files that you can use. See, here's your nail polish. There's your pants links. And you can't see it, but it looks like this. Uh, see your... your uh, Shaders for your face. See that? And here's for if you wanted to make a, uh, a chin cut kind of mustache or a beard for somebody. And uh, rouge, that's how you put makeup on. You know, you put some stuff on there. So you've got all that in your folders already. Now, if you don't want to look around in your own folders or if you are just having trouble finding it, 
you can go to my website that is accompanying with this video. See, it's Quark Yafu. So it's easy to find this website because all you got to do is go to Google and type in Q U A R K Y I F U. And it comes right up. See, there it is. And here's Photoshop tutorials on Second Life Skin. And that has the stuff on there. Now, if you click here, it's got the. That's for this stuff. All the skin shaders are uh, right here in this thing. SL skin shaders. Now, it's a weird thing about uh, Google Sites. They won't let you put zip files on there. I can they'll, they, they let me put files on here that you can download, but they can't be executable files and they can't be zip files. So I had to rename these as ZI instead of zip files. So if, if you want to get your shaders, you come to my site, click over here and download it. And uh, then you have to rename it. Instead of ZI, you have to rename it ZIP. Okay? So there we have that. Okay, we're going to take a minute here to talk about the image size. Uh, when we upload our image into Second Life, we want it to be 512 pixels by 512 pixels. And the reason we want it to be like that is because we want it to res in pretty fast. Uh, now, you could, <clears throat> the I think the biggest texture you could put in if you wanted to is 1024 by 1024. I think Second Life would let you upload one that big. But if you did, it would take four times the resources to to res that in Second Life so that you could see it. And it's, it's uh, I guess it would be more detailed, but it's not that much more detailed. So the you want your skin texture to res in fast. You, every time you zone in someplace, you want your skin texture to come up so people can see you. Now, if you're ever walking around Second Life and you see somebody in their gray, that's probably why they're wearing a high-resolution skin. It hasn't resed in yet. So we want to make our texture 512 by 512 when we put it in Second Life, okay? Just so we get that picture. Now, I probably should say before I go too much further that uh, we're just going to make a, a skin. It's going to be a basic skin. It's not going to be very detailed. Uh, it, you know, it'll be okay. But to make a good skin, you have to agonize over every detail. And it takes hours and hours and hours. And I, I just don't have the time to, uh, I mean... I could make the video for seven hours long, but, you know, I don't think very many people would watch it. So I'm going to make it, I'm try not to rush too much, but I'm going to make the video uh, with a eye towards brevity. So I won't uh, spend too much time on the details, and it should be enough to give you a good idea on how to do all the stuff you need to do to make a complete skin. Okay, now we're going to make our base color. We're going to open up Photoshop. Now, I don't know what kind of version of Photoshop you've got, but it doesn't really matter too much. They've all got pretty much the same functionality for the stuff we're going to do. So well, I'm going to open a file new. Uh, oops, cancel. I want to open it, make a new file. And I'm going to go 512 by 512. And click OK. There's going to open up my file. I don't like it being in that bar, so I'm going to drag it out of there. All right. Now, I like to leave the background where it is for whatever reason. I'm going to press Control J and jump another layer out there. Okay, so now I've got a layer, and this is going to be my background cover. I might as well. Oh, let's call it base layer. Now there are all kinds of ways to make a base layer and all kinds of complicated ways. There are people that do it with brushes and several different colors and all this other stuff. And we're going to have a lot of overlays on this and I'm going to blur textures onto it and things like that. So there should be enough variation with me putting uh, text uh, overlays on it that we're not going to have a problem with uh, variation. So the skin will look very just like real skin does by the time we're done. So we're not going to agonize too much over the base layer, although you could. I do know people that take very careful uh, ways to select their base layer, but and maybe you will eventually someday. So how are we going to find our base layer? Well, we're going to go to Google Images. We're going to type in face, 
and see what comes up. And that looks like a pretty good face. We'll view original image. Doesn't that, that looks like a good color? So we're going to save that, save image. Here's my working directly for this Photoshop thing. Save. Okay, now I'm going to. I guess I can just minimize that. Now I'm going to open that face file. And it docks it to my thing. I'm going to drag that off there so it doesn't do that. Now I'm just going to use my color picker here. Now in the video, you can't see that my cursor is now an eyedropper, but I, I don't know why. I'm using the I'm using Cam Studio to make this, which is a pretty good program, but it's a little buggy. All right, I'm going to roll around over here, and I want to make a light skin color. See, everywhere I click, you can see the values. I want to make a pretty light skin color. I'm going to make it pretty, pretty light. See my color there? That looks pretty good. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, again, you can alter the color later on if we want to. We can make it darker or brighter or add textures to it and all that other shit. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so have my base layer there. Edit, fill, foreground color. Boom, there you have it. There okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our template. Now, the template's going to be useful because it's going to let us know where we're supposed to put everything. So we're going to go File, Open, 512JPEG, Avatar Head. Okay, there we go. Now this uh, is the same size as this. See, that's 512 by 512. I can check image size. See? Okay, now this, our one that we're making, file, uh, oops, image size. 512 by 512. Now, why is that important? Because if these images are the same size, then I can just take this layer, drag it over here, press the shift key, and that locks the edges together, and boom, it goes right on there, right in place. I don't have to mess with it. So now we just put our texture on there. Now, I, this is nice to have on there. It gives you a good idea of where your stuff is, but, you know, we're not going to use it that much because most of the layers that we put on are, are going to be... Uh, the right size and and uh, they'll fit right on there anyway but just for the we're going to rename that face face template okay now the next thing we're going to add is we're going to go open our uh, uh, skin shaders Okay, see, this is all our stuff that we need to put sections on our face. So, okay, first we're going to put our head, head shading and head highlights on here. Okay, so we're going to open those up. Head shading, press the shift key, put it on there. Okay, and just to do them both at once, head highlights... That's the white parts. I'm going to take that, put it on there, press the shift key. Boom, they're both on there. Then close that. Get rid of that. Now you can see these are my layers right here. Now this one is the highlight, so I'm going to have that. Head highlights. And I'm actually going to turn that off because I don't want to use that right now. It's, oops, cancel. I'm going to rename this head shading. Now, there's lots of tricks we can do with this. But my head shading is, I want the white parts black and the black parts white, so I'm going to invert this image. So we're going to go up here to Image, Adjustments, click Invert, and see, now i got that on there. Now, since the white parts are white, I'd better take a, a minute to explain this here. If I use something white and I use it to darken, the white part is just going to have no effect on the image.
Now, the reason why is because when you, you these, if you look at your, your uh, layer modes here, these are your darken modes. These are your lighten modes. And really, the only ones you ever use is multiply or screen. They're, multiply is the darken mode. Screen is the lighten mode. Now, when you tell something to multiply, you're saying take whatever darkness values that I have and impress them on the image in areas where they are darker <coughs> than, than what my image is. Okay, so if I have some dark spots there, it's it's going to darken the places that are lighter than my dark spots, right? Okay, well, if I've got something white, white it is as high a color as you can be. There is nothing whiter than white for the white to affect. Now, that's kind of a hard concept to understand, but if, if you play with it for a while, you'll get used to it. You know, if I, if I put white on there and tell it to uh, darken my color nothing is going to happen the same way if i put black on there and i tell it to screen now let's do that with the head highlights here here's my head highlights i'm going to turn it on i'm going to tell the head highlights channel to it's it's normal now if i told it to darken it would look about the same because you know it already is darkening it darkens the some of the areas a little bit but if i take that same layer and i tell it to screen which is the reverse of multiply you can see it just puts the the light parts on there. Now the black isn't lightening anything at all because there's nothing blacker than what it is. So I've got my highlights on there, which is I guess what I wanted here. Let's click on this and take a closer look. And uh, well, anyway, a little later on we're probably going to play with this and blur it a little bit. But let's get the things on there. See. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I can take this. You see how this, that these are the shaders, overlays? Let's do the head shading, right? Okay. See that head shading? Now, a lot of people would mess with the opacity and say, oh, that's too dark, so I make it lighter, stuff like that. When I do uh, something like that, I don't really want it to be lighter. I want it to be more dispersed. So what I, I could do with this, and I'm not going to do it right now because you kind of want to do all this all at once, is I can go to the filter and I can go blur and I can blur that you I could blur it completely out of existence if I wanted see but you can blur it and you make it go out a little and that looks a lot better if you're you know for your texture and your skins because it's just a, it's like a real shadow a real shadow is blurred it's not you know fuzzy it's blurred so anyway we're not gonna blur it but I, I could if I wanted to okay so there's that. Now let's go on to our next challenge here. What is our next challenge? What is the next thing we're going to put on? We'll find out. We're going to open. Okay, let's put on our eye functions here. Now we're going to have three eye, eye, eye layers that we're going to put on. We're going to put on the eyeliner, the eyeshadow inner, and the eyeshadow outer. Now these are all going to be colors, and we're going to pick the colors. Now I don't want to spend a lot of time picking the colors. I know uh, if there's a girl watching this, she will probably be going, oh, God, let's pick, well, this will be great. We'll pick all kinds of colors. And uh, it's a little bit harder for me because I don't actually use eyeliner. But, uh, okay, here's our, here's our images. Okay, so we're going to go, what is this one? This is eyeliner outer. outer. So we're going to take that, press our shift key, drag it over there, rename it, I. So we don't get it too confused. And I'm actually going to turn that off for right now. Eyeshadow outer. Is that what I just put on there? No, it's not. Or is it? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's eyeshadow outer. Now get rid of that. Now 
Okay. I'm going to put that above my head highlights. And eyeshadow inner. Okay, get rid of that. Eyeliner Alpha. Eyeliner Alpha. Okay. Oops. Forgot to press the shift key. Eyeliner Alpha. Okay. Now let's apply these. Eyeshadow outer. Let's turn these other two off. I have no idea what to make of this stuff, but I do know that I want to use it. If we turn this off, we can see that I want to use the eyeshadow. Here's the area where it goes. I'm going to actually select it. Oops. Get a rough idea where it goes now see I want to darken that area with a color okay I want to darken that area with a color so if I'm gonna darken something I can't use a black background because it'll turn everything black so I got to reverse this first I'm gonna deselect my selections and I'm gonna invert this image so it's white instead of black now now I want my uh, thing to be a different color here. I don't want it to be black. Well, any color will lighten black, okay? Because black is as dark as it gets. So I can choose a nice, let's choose a purple. Let's get our swatches up here. And uh, don't go crazy here uh, saying, oh, God, don't pick that color. But uh, all right, here we go. We're going to pick... Uh, Dark Violet Magenta. How's that sound? See, that is now my color. Dark Violet Magenta. And uh, I'm going to create a new layer. Okay. I'm going to edit. I'm going to fill my new layer with foreground color, which is Dark Violet Magenta. Okay. Now I'm going to use this layer to lighten the black sections of my eyeshadow outer. So I'm going to go... Instead of normal, I'm going to go screen. Okay, see, now look at that. It turned out pretty good, huh? Now, since if I turn this layer off, it would have the screen effect on the layer that's below it. See, whatever I'm screening is having the effect on the layer directly below it. So I don't want that to be a, a functional problem there. Now, I could. I could just leave it like that. And then I would use this one and use that to, to uh, multiply. And it would see it still has the effect from that layer so, so I don't want to do that uh, although I do want that to multiply I'm not going to do it right now I don't want to get too confused here what I'm going to do is take these two layers and merge them and make them one layer so the uh, so as a normal layer it looks like this see normal layer now I can take that normal layer and use it as a uh, screw or uh, multiply and there's my eyeshadow now let me show you something here with this I know that might not look very good to you it probably doesn't but this is where I was talking about before where we can blur it this is where you really want to blur something because you can take this filter and go over here and and blur that with a Gaussian blur and you can make that look really nice see that isn't that nice that blur works really good for stuff like that. Okay. So we will leave that. Okay. Eyeshadow inner. That is this part right here. Right here. Okay. So, you know, eyeshadow inner. We got to do the same thing we did with the other one. We're going to do a, uh, take our image and invert it. 
Okay, now we're going to take and what color should we put on our eyeshadow inner? Well, we're going to go a little darker than what we did. We did dark violet magenta. Now we're just going to do dark violet. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill my new layer with the foreground color, which is dark violet magenta. I'm going to use that to lighten the dark area of my eye shadow outer then I'm going to merge these two layers then I'm going to take that merged layer and use it to multiply or darken my texture See how that worked out now remember uh, as I told you before the white sections have no effect on uh, on multiply white just doesn't do anything so I mean might as, not, might as well not even be there I'm sure a lot of people are asking hey can't I just take my uh, wandy tool and, and select everything I want to select and you know what you probably could for some of this stuff but the problem is you wouldn't get the edge here because you have to rely on the tolerance here to select your edge so like what the tolerance if I use my wand tool right okay see I can click with my little eyedropper I can click and it'll tell me the values of everything well that's value zero 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 that means it's black right but this isn't black that's value 90 okay it's not white see that's value 66 69 107 so how would I select those what you're doing with you you use the uh, uh, magic wand tool you have a tolerance you're saying I want to select whatever value this pixel is that I click on and I want to go 20 pixel values lighter and 20 pixel values darker than that that's how it selects with the wand tool so you could do it but it'd be a lot of hassle and probably wouldn't work out really good so anyway I'm going to deselect that we're going to go back to what we were doing <clears throat> okay so this is the eyeliner I want this black so I'm going to image I'm going to adjustments and I'm going to invert okay now I've got exactly what I want I don't have to mess with it anymore I'm going to use that to darken or multiply on my texture see pretty good working out pretty good so far huh good idea all right all right what are we gonna do next file open I have a I have an idea that we're gonna have to do the uh, mouth texture pretty soon so well, we might as well do that now let's put our mouth texture on there this one's kind of a pain because it's got something in there that these eyes I don't know what's up with that I really don't I don't know how to use this part here well anyway you need this because that's your eyelashes okay you don't need this I don't even know why that's there I haven't found any use for that. That looks like hell no matter how I apply it. Now, maybe there's something I'm missing there. But, I don't know, somebody will write in and tell me. So what I want to do is get rid of that. So I'm going to go... I can see with my little eyedropper, I can see the color is 255. It's white everywhere, except for the areas that are marked. So I'm going to take my little lasso tool and go around here. And I'm going to edit fill that with white so now I don't have to worry about that anymore I'm going to go control D to deselect my circle uh, circle there I'm going to take that background drag it over there press shift boom it's on there okay and I will oops do I want to save changes no I don't and this I will name mouth and eyelashes Okay, and I can use this. I want to use that to darken or multiply my texture. See, there's my mouth and eyelashes. All right, now what are we going to do next? What else do we need for our face? Oh, let's do the... the uh, what do we want to do? Rosy face or rouge? They look about the same. Let's do rosy face. Okay. We'll take our rosy face. Well, that's got some stuff on there, huh? 
Okay, we'll go over here. We'll press Shift. It'll pop right on there. I can close that and get rid of it. Rosy face. And how do I want to do this? This is a thing I could turn red. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is invert it. Okay, now I want to make it, put a color on there. So let's go to my swatches and we'll find a, a nice color. What is this color? Pastel magenta red. Pastel magenta. Let's go pastel magenta red. Okay, that'll be good. That looks like that might be a little lighter than what I need, but we will leave it be and see what happens. Okay, so we will go create a new layer. Edit fill our layer with foreground color okay and use that foreground color to what am I doing here I am going to lighten or screen my red areas that looks pretty good doesn't it okay now I'm gonna blend those two layers together merge layers and I'm going to use this to darken or multiply on my texture oh, it's got a little bit of a rosy face there We're going to have to blur all that stuff. Okay, it looks like it's a little over the top. All right. What else can we do? What else can we do? Head alpha. Okay. Let's see what this is. I have no idea what that is. Ooh. Okay, we'll open that and we'll open head skin grain. Okay. Oh, head skin grain looks pretty good. It's got some textures on there for us, doesn't it? Doesn't that look good? What are we going to do with this? All right. Let's open it up so we'll take a good look. We can use that to darken our skin. We don't have to do anything to it. Okay. Head skin grain. We'll put that on there. Shift, doom. Oops. Add skin grain. I wonder why that didn't change my name. R O S E Y. A L P. Rosie Alpha head skin grain, and we will multiply that right on there. What happened? I'll put a little skin grain on there. That's pretty good. It's a bit much if you ask me. I think we're going to have to blur that off of there. But we'll see. Okay, what is this head alpha? I think that... I actually don't think we're going to play with the head alpha because there's a little level of complexity there because the eyebrows, see, are gray. Okay, so let's just close that. Okay, before we go too much further, let's save our file. We don't want to forget to do this. This is pretty important because, uh, you know, it could crash and mess everything up. Okay, let's see what we can do. We're going to save our file as... Save as. We're going to call it face... 1. There you go. That's a good name for that. Okay, let's do lips. We're going to file, open, go to our shaders, and where's our lips? Okay, we want lip gloss alpha and lips mask. Now, there's a lipstick alpha, but I'm not going to use that because uh, it's complicated to use that in particular one. So I'm just going to go control, click, control, click that. I'm going to open both of those. Okay, this one I'm going to drag it over there. And this one was uh, Lips Mask. So let's name that L-I-P-S-M-A-S-K. 
and whoops mask we can close now and lip gloss alpha okay drag that over there shift put it on there l-i-p g-l-o-s-s-a-l-p-h-a -S -S okay I'm gonna close that now we're gonna do the lips mask first now we're gonna take we want to end up with a red lips on a white background so that we can darken our lips see there's our lips there we want to put a dark red lip color over that so it's got to be darker than what that is okay so get a darker red so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that image and invert it now i'm just going to i keep going up to the menu but i can just press Control i and invert that so now i've got my lips mask there now i'm going to create a new layer I'm going to pick a nice red, darker red, orange. How about just darker red here? That's what it says there. Okay, and I'm going to edit, fill with foreground color. Okay, there's my foreground color. Now I'm going to use my foreground color to lighten the black part of the lips. So the foreground color, the dark red is dark, but it's not darker than black. So we're going to... Mm, screen there you go now I got my red lips now I'm gonna merge these two layers merge together merge layers now I've got exactly what I was talking about I have a white background with red lips now I can take this layer and multiply my lips see that worked pretty good see I got red lips you can still see some of the detail before it now I could make a whole video on just doing lips and just doing eyebrows I mean you can actually go to there's if you go on on the internet and you type in lips textures you'll be able to find some lips textures that you can use to do this and there's some other things that you can do you can warp your uh, lips and make them match there you can take an actual picture JPEG picture of lips kinda cut out the lips there's this really cool tool that allows you to do that if you ever have the time you should learn how to use this pen tool because you can get really really tight with the pen tool uh, I might put a link to that site there's a site that teaches you how to do the pen tool so let's let's see how that works out if I remember okay now lip gloss alpha is already black I want to use it to lighten so the so <clears throat> all I have to do is go screen lighten Obviously, the black part isn't going to lighten anything. The white part is there. That's exactly what I wanted. And there you have it. So much for that. Oops. Okay, now there's one more curious little layer that we want to add. There's actually two. We've got to do eyebrows, too. But first, we're going to do this. We're going to open. This is the bump map for the head. Okay, I'm going to open the bump map for the head. And there you have it. This is a... I'm going to drag it over here, press the shift key, and there's the bump map. You can see it adds a nice level of uh, detail there. I'm going to put type that bump map, B-U-M-P. Now there's all kinds of ways to use a bump map. Uh, but this in particular bump map I found, see if you overlay it, it creates some shadows here. And what I like about it is it has these... It has these really sharp lines right here around the nose. See? But it also darkens our texture, and there's all kinds of things I don't like about it. I don't like this this part of the uh, chin. They call it a chin shadow. Uh, well, anyway, I, I, there's a lot of things I don't like about it, too. So I'm not going to use the whole, whole bump map, but I do like these dark lines right here. See the dark lines? I like those little edges of detail so I'm gonna show you a little trick now I'm gonna get my little lasso tool here and I'm going to select this section now I've got my selection I've noticed it's a little too low so I want to move it up so without resizing I'll just press the shift key and lift it up and then let go of the shift key and now I can resize it again so if you hold the shift key down you can move it around all over the place as soon as you let go of the shift key, then when you move it, it resizes it, okay? So I'm going to hold the shift key down, 
move it to where I want it, drag it down, and I think that's right about where I want to put it, right about there. Okay, now I'm going to feather that edge a little bit just to be sure. I'm, it's probably not going to need to feather it, but I'm going to go to Selection, go to Modify, Feather, and I'm going to feather the radius by 5 pixels. So that's going to blend into my layer a little better. Now I'm going to go Control J, and that jumps my selection to a new layer. Now I'm going to turn this old layer off. I don't need that anymore. Now I've got my new layer, and let me click on this seat. Uh, let me show you how this would affect if I did an overlay. See, it would put my little lines on there. But it would also lighten that part of the face where the overlay is because the gray would have an effect on that. So, which is okay, but that's not what I want it to do. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay, here's a little trick. I'm going to use a function called levels. Okay, levels allows you to take certain areas and send them. Okay, so you can see here the high end level is 255. So anything at 255 is white. Okay, if I move this down a little bit, now I'm saying send everything from, from uh, brightness value 181 and up to white. See how that works? I'm sending everything, instead of 255, you know, this would be the normal layer, right? I'm going to say I don't want 255 to be white anymore. I want 188 to be white. Now see, it also moves my center, which I don't really, you know, doesn't bother me too much that it does that but I'm what I want to do is I want to make this the bright parts the white parts like the gray I want to make them as white as possible and keep my black parts now see I can't now, now I've taken 158 and made it from 158 up has gone to white okay now if you look carefully you can see my black parts are still there I want my black parts to be black too so let's see if I can do that. See, now I'm saying take everything at output levels 42 and below and, and send it to black. Okay, and that's not having the effect that I want because it's darkening up the gray and I don't want to do that. So I might not be able to do that. So let's see if I can change that a little bit. So that's making it, changing my center isn't helping me either because it's darkening or it's lightening my black areas, which I want to stay black so not sure I'm going to get what I want here but what I want is that real dark outlines right here and I want everything else to be white so let's play with it a little bit and see if I can get that so I can send can't send anything else to white so I think about 161 is as white as I can get that's not going to work let's try this there that looks pretty good now I got some sharp dark outlines that's really kind of what I want right there okay so now I'm gonna go okay so now it's white the gray part is not gonna have as great an effect when I darken with this because most of this is white now it still will have some effect because when I use this to level when I use this layer to uh, darken there are still going to be some areas like I could click right here this might be darker than my skin so it might have the effect of darkening my skin but this area here certainly won't be darker than anything because it's white so let's see what happens here we're gonna put this on and I'm gonna multiply it onto my texture and see what happens and it looked uh, pretty good see let's see how that works so I've got some some darkness there, some dark edges. I've got a real dark edge right around the nose and right these outlines here. Okay, so that looks good. That's pretty much what I wanted. Now I'm going to take that. I want that area to be there. I don't want it to be as well defined. So like I said before, this is a great little trick. We're going to take our blur and we are going to blur that out. Okay, that looks pretty good okay now we're going to take the opacity down a little bit on it I 
And see that gives my a little definition to my nose there. And a little bit of shading to my uh, face. Okay, and hopefully that'll work out. We might have to change that later. Okay, let's talk about our eyebrows for a little bit. What it breaks down to is we don't have eyebrows. I want to show you why. We can open our layer with the eyebrows alpha. And uh, this just isn't a very good bump map for eyebrows. Now I can take it and put it on here and, and shift and put it on there. And I can invert the image. And... Uh, multiply with it but you see those are just big bushy eyebrows and that's what comes in SL so they're pretty much useless you can't do anything with that so uh, let's explore our options of what we can do with our eyebrows okay so the first thing we can consider for our eyebrows is to go to the uh, internet and see if we can find some eyebrows we'll go to Google images type in E Y E B R O W A L P H A and see if we got some eyebrows alpha. And sure enough, we do. Here's a nice one right here. That looks like a nice eyebrow. So let's take a look at that. We'll view original image size. Good. Just what we need. Save image as. And I have to go to my Photoshop tutorial. Save suggestion. It shouldn't be suggestion, it should be eyebrow. save and we're batting a thousand okay we'll go back to Photoshop we're gonna have to know where to place our eyebrow so I'm gonna make a copy of our face template control J drag it all the way up to the top here and turn it on okay see I gotta make my eyebrow go right there or right here wherever the one it is okay I will go file, open. There's my eyebrow. I'm going to open it. All right, it's white. I want it to be black, so we're going to invert it. Control I. Okay. Now I can take my eyebrow, pull it over here. It's not going to do any good to shift because it's not the same size. I can control T. That gives me free transform. And when you control T, a lot of times uh, I want to maintain my aspect size, so I'll use the shift key to lock the aspect so I don't accidentally ch change the aspect ratio. Okay, so that looks about the same size. Let's, let's go multiply. That's what we're going to do here. multiply how's that look does that look like right about where it's at okay that looks pretty good let's see what happened and there it is on our face probably should bring it up a little and over So there's one eyebrow that looks okay. Looks a little bushy, actually. Well, we're not going to use it anyway. But uh, all right, now I'm going to Control J, jump my eyebrow. By the way, it makes it bushier when you Control J it because you know it just does. Okay, I'm going to edit that image. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to flip it horizontally like that. Now I can take my little arrow key and arrow it over. We've got two eyebrows. Merge them together, merge layers, and do my multiply again, and there are some eyebrows. Okay, so that's one way to do eyebrows. We're actually not going to do it like that. I'm going to leave those on there, but I'm going to turn them off. Okay, I'm going to turn my thing back on. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to take my 
little circle tool go over here and make a, a little eyebrow right about in that area I'm gonna go edit fill with a black okay I've got that on there uh, the control D what I, I want this face texture to be on but I don't want to see it all the way so I'm gonna reduce the opacity so I should still be able to see the you know the avatar outlines a little bit but I want to see it in rel in its relation to the in its relation to the uh, avatar look too okay so now I've got my eyebrow there and this is where the smudge tool works really good so you got your smudge tool the settings for your smudge tool I've got a fuzzy brush you know it's got a little bit of a little bit of a fuzz on it and the strength is 50 percent and I'm gonna just smudge oops control Z I'm smudging the wrong layer okay I'm gonna control smudge my eyebrow down a little bit there see smudge tool is your friend I'm just gonna take that off altogether now How's that look for an eyebrow? I guess I can move it a little bit. It might look a little better. Now I know it's not very dark, but I can go Control J, make it a little darker. Actually, move that jump layer up a little bit. Maybe even smudge it out a little. How does that look compared to our other eyebrow? They're both pretty bushy. Well, I guess this is going to be a guy, huh? Might as well take that lip gloss off. I, I could play with, uh, again, I could do a whole video on eyebrows, and I could play with this forever. Now, see, my eyebrows, they look a little too close together here. Maybe they're not, but... Just to uh, show you, if you have something like that and it's close together, and you know I merged them together, but what I can do is I take one of them, and remember I told you if I jump that layer off, Control J will jump that into a new layer. Well, it would leave, it would jump a copy of it into a new layer. If I go Control Shift J, it jumps the original to a uh, two layer. Uh, now you see I've got two layers again here, and I can actually. Uh, use my little key and move them around a little bit all right okay let's do some adjustments while we're here uh, let's start blurring this out there that skin texture looks like hell if we don't blur it out it's going to continue to look like hell so we are going to go to head shading, I think it was. Well, we can start with head shading because that needs to be blurred out too. All right, so let's take our head shading, go filter, go blur, Gaussian blur. Let's blur it out pretty good. We got to soften things up quite a bit here. Okay, skin is a very subtle thing okay head highlights same thing oops you know what we're gonna do we're gonna before we start doing all these changes we're gonna save our uh, face so if we change it too much and we don't like it we can always go back to the way it was okay so now headlights alpha that's this see that highlights right there see the highlights for the ears and stuff filter blur we want our skin to be very subtle have some detail, but we'll still have some subtleness there. You know, 
I wanted to see where it was to begin with because that looked pretty good. So I can't cancel and go back. What I want to do is go Alt and it'll reset it to where it was. 7.8. That looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it like that now. Maybe that'll be good for all of it. Now the eyeliner outer outer is that. That really does look like it's a bit much. So we can reduce the opacity of that a little bit. Well, let's try let's try blurring it. And blurring does not seem like it's going to be the option that's going to work for us. Has too much of a footprint there. Okay, so I'll reset it back to where it was. Okay, let's just reduce the opacity. Kind of soften that up a little bit. Eyeliner inner. That's that right there. Now that looks like that'll blur out real good. In fact, I kind of wish that was a little darker. Uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay. Eyeliner Alpha, that's this right here. Now, what I have discovered from my experience in Second Life, it's better if you just take this area, entire area, and fill it in with black. Now, I know that sounds like a strange thing, but we're going to do it anyway. So, I'm going to take my pen tool and put a little dot here. And go over here and make another little dot and see, I got my little thing there now I can put another dot here It really pays to get good with this pen tool because you can do a lot of stuff with it. Now I want it to be a little larger than the visible area so it will give it a little bit of a, a blackened look. So I want it to be black right around the edges of the eye. Right around the inside edges of the eye. So it'll kind of make it look like we got somebody took some eyeliner and put it in there. So I'm going to go edit. Fill selection is what I want to do. So I have to go to my path. I guess i got to name that. Uh, I don't want to get into working with paths too much. This is, it's fun. It's a great thing to do, but it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Okay. So I want to go fill path with black. Okay. Oops. Control Z. Hmm. How about stroke path? Nope, let's not do that. Make selection. Feather radius zero. Okay. Uh, now, you see it selected everything except the part that I want to fill. So I'm going to go Control Shift I and invert my selection. Now it will fill what I want. Now I can go over here to layer. I have a regular selection. I can go edit, fill with black, and there we have it. Control D deselects my thing. Uh, I can control J, jump it. Okay. Now I'm going to take my jumped layer and I'm going to edit, transform it by flipping it horizontal. Okay. Now that I've got it flipped horizontal, I can grab it and pull it over the other eye. I like to push down the shift key when I pull it over the other eye because it's, it's going to help me. Keep it in place there. 
Okay, and that's going to do for our eyeliner. And I might as well merge these two layers together. It'll probably look pretty good. Okay, now eyeliner alpha we did before. I'm going to I might as well name this. Eyeliner fill. Mouth and eyelashes. We don't really have to do anything to. Rosy Alpha. Okay. You can see our Rosy Alpha does look a bit too rosy. So let's... Okay, well, let's try blurring it. Maybe if we can blur it just a little bit. That looks pretty good. What do you think? Pretty good? Okay. <clears throat> Head skin TGA. Now that's, remember that's our little dots that we got on our face? We could actually get rid of those all together. It wouldn't matter. It'd probably look better if we got rid of the little dots all together. But what we're going to do is, I do want some uh, variation in the skin, so I'm going to see if I can blur this out. And I probably will blur it quite a bit. So we will get some variation. I don't know if it's going to end up making a difference in our picture because it seems like after you blur at a certain distance, it's just all gone anyway. That looks good. Okay, let's see what kind of difference that makes in our skin. Adds a little realism, but I'm not sure we want realism. People in Second Life really don't like realism very much. Let's take the opacity down. They want perfect bodies. And you know, people in Second Life are generally, I think the average height is like 6'6". Six, six. You know, even the girls are huge. I mean, Second Life does use relative measurements. So, okay, head and skin grain is done. Now let's go to our lips. Can't really do much with the lips. Now, I'm a little disappointed, or I wish I had more time to work with the lips because you could make some wonderful lips. I could just import some lips in here that I made, and that would probably be nice uh, for us too. But, you know, that's not how we learn how to do this. So, there's our lip gloss. We definitely want to blur our lip gloss because that is a little too shiny and uh, does look kind of good. Well, let's see if we can blur it a little. The reason blur works so good is because light actually does blur. You know, light doesn't reflect off things directly. It reflects off of them at all kinds of different angles and actually does blur. So that's why blurs look realistic. Okay, bump map, bump face mod. That's that thing. Okay, we definitely... Let's see if we can blur that out so that's not so sharp. Now, I think we... We did that a little bit before, but I didn't. I wasn't able to see it in context with the rest of the face. In fact, we might want to just try reducing the opacity a little bit. No, nope. let's put the opacity all the way up. No. Nope. See, I like these lines right here. I want to keep those. I like this. I like that right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll try that. And we got our eyebrows and all our other stuff, and our face looks about done. Now let's see if we uh, put it on a model in Second Life and see what it looks like. All right, to upload it into Second Life, there's a few little things we want to do. First, we want to file, save our copy as. We're going to make this face 4. 
So no matter what happens, we got that. We can always revert back to that. So I, I want to make sure that this image size is 512 by 512, and it is, and I knew it would be, but we got to make sure because that's important. Now I want to file, save this as, but this time I want to save it as a Targa. So this is face four. And for some reason, Second Life likes Targa files. Everything is uh, TGA in Second Life. I don't know why that is. If you put a JPEG, if you made it a JPEG, it would work. You could upload a JPEG, but I'm, I'm going to make it a Targa. Resolution, 24 bits. Now, the resolution has more to do with if you have channels in there than anything else. So 24 bits is fine. So we're going to go OK. Now, I'll upload it into Second Life, and, you know, you should know how to do that. I don't want to spend a lot of time in that. And I'm going to stop the video now, and then when I get on Second Life, I'll, I'll start it back up. So let's stop here. Okay, let's upload my texture. We will go to uh, Build, Upload Image. It's going to cost 10 Linden. At Photoshop, Tutorials. Oh, okay, face JPEG. That's what we called. No, that's not it. Face four. There it is. Okay, open. There's my skin. Upload ten, ten dollars. Now, while it's uploading, I'm going to go to my textures. Okay, I'm going to go up here and make new body part, new skin. Okay, and we're going to call this new skin face 4. Okay. Enter. I'm going to right click on that and wear face 4 skin. There it is. Okay. Now, I can right click on myself here and go edit my my appearance. Nope, that's not it edit my shape let's try that no that's not it edit my huh edit my outfit ah there it is edit my outfit okay I'm gonna close the upload screen face 4 is the skin that I'm wearing and I want to edit that skin Okay, now I don't need any of those head colors or any of that other stuff. All I'm interested in is this head. So I'm going to click on the head. It's going to go textures, face 4. Okay, put face 4 on. Let's see how it looks. First thing I can see is that the eyebrows are indeed a little high. Lip shadow looks good. Lips are not great. They're okay. Oh, it's a big black spot on the head. We'll have to look at that and see where that came from. But outside of that, it looks pretty good. It's about what we bargained for. Lips do look kind of funny, but this is a kind of funny shape, too. So, you know, I didn't promise you a perfect skin, but, you know, pretty good. I wonder what that black spot is. I'll have to look at that. What did I have there on the back of my head? Okay, so on the checklist, eyelashes turned out. The eyeliner is a little too big. I'm going to try using that a little uh, original eyeliner. And let's bring the eyebrows down a little. And the lips. But, you know, like I said, let's not spend 5,000 years on lips. Okay. Okay, so first thing we want to do is determine what happened with our back of our head. That was this right here. We can turn on our template and we can see, we get in nice and close there. See, this is the back of our head. Our mouth and tongue texture uh, got over, overlaid onto our the back of our head. So what I'm going to do is get that uh, layer right here. And I'm going to come in pretty close. And I'm going to get my polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to follow this line right here. 
make sure to stay on this side of this this line the back of the head all the way around and select that area okay so I'm gonna very carefully go here right up to there now see I'm still on this side of the line Okay, now you can see I have that layer selected. So I am going to control J, jump that layer out. Okay, now you see I still have the problem because this is the layer that's still in the way. But what I can do with this layer now is just take my little box tool, see my little box tool here, and make a box over that whole thing and fill it with white. Now it's gone. Now I'm not going to have that thing on the back of my head anymore. Uh, so I'm going to control D to deselect that. Now let's lower the eyebrows. I'm going to select them together and just push my, make sure my little move key is lit up. And I'm going to lower those right down to right about where it says they should be in the thing. Looks like I should have to move them to the right a little too, doesn't it? Okay, so now the eyebrows should be right spot on. Okay, now let's fix our eyeliner fill. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take my eyeliner fill, I'm going to drag it up so it is above my face template. Okay, now I'm going to take the face template and bring the opacity all the way up so I can see where, the, where I'm at with that. Now I'm going to adjust the eyes separately so I have to split this texture into two textures because I merged it together. So I'm going to use my little selection tool, select it. I'm going to go Control shift j and that jumps it to a new layer. Now I'm going to go Control t and that's going to allow me to fit this right to where it needs to be, which unfortunately I don't know. Exactly where the texture needs to be. But I'm going to line it up with that line there. Okay, see this line right around here? That's the one that I'm going to assume it was because it was just a little too big. And if you look at the other one here, see I can press my press my uh, space bar and hold it down. You look at the other one here and you can see see how that one is? If it were a little closer over here, I think this is the line I want to follow right here. See? Okay, so that's what I'm going to do over here. Okay, so we're going to select this one. I'm going to go Control T, and let's. I'm going to press my Control key and grab this corner, and bring that right to where I thought it should be. Okay, I'm going to press the Control key, grab this corner, bring that right over there. not letting me grab the corner like I want to. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now we will leave that like that. Okay, let's turn that off. It does look like it might be still a little too big. Let's Control T. Let's try to pull that Control Z.
getting pretty good, huh? Do that with this other one too. Control T. Now it's okay if it's a little too big. I actually want it to be a little too big because I want the eyes to have a little black around them. All right, now it looks pretty good, and that should upload into our uh, second life pretty good. Okay, you can see here I've uploaded into Second Life again, and these, the uh, back section uh, that was messed up on the head is gone. The eyebrows are right where they should be. The eye liner is still a little too big, and the lips are a little messed up, but that's, you know, it's about all we can do with lips without going through a 30-minute video on lips. So I'm going to see if I can fix those uh, two little things, and we'll, we're just going to move on and, and go ahead with the, uh, the body part of it. Okay, here we are back at the eyes. I'm going to go and control. First, I want to zoom in here. And let's, let's do an, an overlay of the texture. And I will reduce the opacity of the texture so I can see where it probably should be. Okay, control T gives me the eye. Let's see if I can shrink it down a little. Match that up with the texture. That looks right about good right there. Space key, grabby thing. Take this off, control T. Okay, hopefully that will be perfect. I don't know what I can do about the lips. Maybe I can give them a bit of an outline. Let's see if we can do a outline for the lips real quick. We will. Well, if I select that, and I'll select my little wandy tool and then try to select the lips. Okay, and then we'll go to a new layer and edit. Stroke that with outside with black. Okay. Control D. And then we'll blur that a little bit. That might help. You know, while I'm at it, it's not going to hurt anything to try 
and put some actual little ridges in there I can get a brush tool and I can pick a one pixel hard brush and I got a new layer opened up here so I'm just gonna go put some lines in my lips and then go layer layer style bevel and emboss see if I can make this work nope that's not going to work but I can blur it let's see if I can do that Blur for everything. That looks a little better. That might give the lips a little life there. Okay, so we got that. That's as good as we're going to do it. I'm going to file, save as, we'll save it as face six. Okay, and then I will file, save as, face six, Targa. Okay, save. Okay. 